Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christy and today I am coming to you from Big Bend National Park. This place is amazing. So stick around. I'll take you on a few hikes with it. And I'm here with my good friends Jesse and Tyler from Travel Like No One Else. And they are going to be along with me for these hikes, so stick around. Just wanted to say a huge thank you to Katie's Casita Closets for sponsoring today's video. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of the closet modification that I had added. Make sure to check out the description and visit their website for more information. So this was my first visit to a national park and let me tell you, it did not disappoint. With over 800,000 acres in the park and 150 miles of trails, there really is something for everyone here. You just need to be prepared to drive a lot <laughs> to get between locations, but I had a wonderful time. So I'm gonna jump right into the hiking here. And the first thing that we did was the hot springs. Let me tell you that the drive up to the hot springs trail you definitely want to pay attention. Not sure if you can tell in this video, but it's a one way and there is a pretty decent drop off on the other side. You definitely want to take this trek very slow. So getting to the hot springs, you actually have several trail options. There's a hot springs loop trail, which is 1.4 miles, a hot springs canyon trail, which is three miles. And we chose the short direct route, which was about half a mile round trip. So I'm coming to you from the hot springs here at um, Big Bend, and this is the hot springs. My new friends, everybody say hello. 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 So this place is really cool. It's like maybe a half mile walk down here to the springs. You've got to check it out. The water's really warm, and then there's a nice swim hole right underneath. So the hot springs are definitely a community event, but it was really nice meeting everyone. A quick shout out to Jordan. Best of luck in your future van adventures. It was just a great little uh, hot tub to start our trip. It can get up to 105 degrees in the hot springs, but it was really nice. So we moved on to the Lost Mine Trail, which was 4.8 miles. And when it starts out at the beginning with bear and mountain lion warnings, it's a little unnerving. However, we did see a deer, but nothing else very threatening on the way. I will tell you that I enjoyed this hike tremendously, but the inclines in certain parts are no joke. Um, I had to take a few, what I call lung breaks <laughs> because I was breathing so hard. But it was a workout, but let me tell you, the views from up top were amazing. Once we got up there, I sat for a bit, enjoyed a well-deserved snack, and just took a little time to soak in the beauty. Definitely recommend this trail. Anything to say, Tiny Texan? I made it! <laughs> so, this is what it's like when you get up for an early morning hike with the best neighbors in the world. Say good morning, Tyler. Good morning, people. <laughs> Look at this. It's not even daylight outside. We're getting ready to go hike and he's out here slaving over a stove. Next up is the Santa Elena Canyon Trail. You have an option of 1.6 mile trail and there's also an overview and you can just walk right down to the water. Let me tell you, the canyon walls rise about 1,500 feet from the Rio Grande and the scenery is absolutely spectacular. Now to get to the other side of the trail, you have to swim or wade depending on the time of year 
through the water and climb um, an embankment on the other side. So we opted not to do that and we just kind of hung around, climbed around a little bit and just enjoyed the sandy beach area with the absolutely gorgeous views. I would have absolutely loved to be in a kayak on this water. If I had one with me, I would have jumped in it right there. So this is called the Window Trail. It's about a five mile round trip trail. Um, I think the first two and a half miles are downhill, which means when you're very tired, you're having to come back uphill. But apparently this is one of the most popular trails down here. So you do have an option to take a shortcut, but we opted to hike the five miles and this was my absolute favorite trail of everything that we did. Once you get down into the canyons, the trail takes you through some beautiful, huge walls with, I swear, the ever-changing colors of the rock. It was beautiful reds, and it was gorgeous. Um, it was very, very nice meeting the folks from Canada. Sorry I didn't get your names. I hope that you guys continue to have amazing adventures. Um, my opinion on this is if you have one trail that you pick to do while visiting, it would be this one. Once you get up to the window, if you get very close, just know that it's very slippery there. There can be some water runoff sometimes and the rocks are super slick. So just be aware of that. But man, is it a beautiful scene. We start heading back up from the window and we find this toxic waste that we did not see on the way down. We went down little ways and had to about face. Now we're going back to find out where we actually should have gone. <coughs> and moving on to the Grapevine Hills Trail where everyone goes to see the balanced rock. It's 2.2 miles on this trail and it is through mostly unshaded desert. Um, first of all, getting to this, it's 13 miles, the road is 13 miles to get back to this particular trail and it is the bumpiest road. I think it took us 35 or 40 minutes just to get down the road. So it, it is definitely, you have to take your time going down the road to get to it. But then when you get there, it is, uh, this may be a little biased because we hiked and it was almost 90 degrees. So it was really warm. This would be my least favorite of all the trails, um, except for the last quarter mile. The last quarter mile is not a flat path, um, but up some decently steep rock faces. Um, I definitely enjoyed the short challenge, but with the 90 degree heat and no shade, the effort just didn't feel like the payout was worth it. Uh, again, that may just be because of the time that we went. Um, if you can only do a few hikes, try the window or the lost mine, but if you got time, go ahead and give this one a try. Um, just note at the very beginning of the trail, there are warnings of ankle and other injuries, so just be pre prepared. So as far as where we camped, we stayed at the Roadrunner Travelers RV Park there in Terlingua. We didn't stay inside the National Park. Um, number one, there's limited space available and also there is almost zero cell signal there. Um, but this park, even though it's on a main road, is nice and quiet. They have full hookups and uh, you're still about three or four miles away from the Big Bend entrance. So it was really nice. Uh, the place does have a, a nice recreation area with a community fire pit with lots of wood included, um, a life-size Jenga, cornhole, tetherball, and horseshoes. Just a nice place. We didn't really spend any time there. We were too tired at night, but I thought it was still a nice thing for them to have there. 
So the park also has these cool holding tanks um, where graffiti's all over them. And not only are you encouraged, they also um, provided us with some different color paint markers, which was cool. And of course, we took the time to leave our own personal marks. We put our channels and information on there. And it was cool just kind of seeing the past visitors and the messages that have been left before. And we closed out the final night of our trip sitting around the campfire talking about how wonderful the trip had been. So I hope you liked the video, and if you ever get a chance to come down to Big Bend National Park, I highly recommend it. Remember to enjoy those little things, and we'll see you next time. And this is where Miss Tiny Texan stays. <laughs> <laughs> Taking over Christy's channel. Tiny Texan Adventure coming at you. Enjoy the little things.